Uh, people have written things that export out to a database. So uh, some of the guys have automated test things where it drops everything that they see you know, in their sessions into a database. And then later, if they have an issue, they can go back and say, hey, what point did this change? You can export Visual Studio web test files. So Visual Studio web test is, a, is a basically a feature of Visual Studio team system. It allows playback and sort of automated um, HTTP requests out to a website. And you can actually use Fiddler, Fiddler to collect those requests and then play them back uh, using Visual Studio web tests. It's fully scriptable, so you can write your own exporters. And then as I mentioned previously, Fiddler has this native session archive zip format that you can easily exchange over email. It's compressed, and you can encrypt it. For traffic comparison, you know, a great scenario is basically, hey, I want to tell the difference between you know, this browser and this other browser, or this site and this other version of the site. And so to do that, basically all you have to do is, is, is just use WinDiff. So I'm going to load another archive, and I think I have, uh, I think I have a good example of this one. Uh, compare traffic.saz. And so basically I've got these two sessions here, and you know, if, if you look actually at the, uh, the columns over on the right, you'll see that one of them was, uh, was from the Chrome process. And so if we, if we compare these two sessions, you're going to see that um, basically what are the differences between what, what Chrome and Firefox get back from this particular web page. And so this is really useful if you're trying to do, say, you know, a user agent sniffing test. Like, do I get back different HTML when I send the IE9 user agent string? And so this is very useful for that type of scenario. Or in the case previously where somebody sent you traffic from a capture that they did and said, hey, it doesn't work on my machine. You can pretty quickly say, load up the capture and actually do the comparison between those two captures and say, well, did they get something different than what I got. And that allows you to help narrow down issues. One of the other things is there's a plugin which actually offers the ability to diff two SAS files completely. And so you can actually load up a SAS file which was captured in Firefox and a SAS file which was captured in IE and actually say, hey, of the entire set of things that were you know, requested and responded to in, this, in these two captures, what's different? And it'll do a comparison um, which is a little bit loose so you can, you can basically you know, not account for you know, the date header and other things which are expected to be different. Um, but the content bodies, uh, obviously, if they're changed, it'll let you know about that. So a new feature added about two months ago is the ability to do a viewer mode. So some people said, hey, that differ thing is kind of neat, but really I want to do like comparisons of the traffic timeline. So I want to see sort of the flow map between these two scenarios. So Fiddler offers a viewer mode now, where if you pass the command line parameter viewer, it'll start up in sort of a read-only uh, session archive zip examination only mode. And so you can actually go look at the traffic, um, but have multiple instances open. And so Fiddler itself normally doesn't allow you to have multiple instances open, because when you start chaining proxies things start to behave a little strangely. Like if you unchain them in the wrong order, uh, your proxy settings aren't right anymore and so forth. And so this viewer mode uh, was a commonly requested feature from the community and, and it's been put in. Now, as I mentioned you know, at the beginning, it's not all about just reading. It's also about changing traffic. And so I want to talk quickly about some of the traffic modification uh, features of Fiddler. So the first is the automated rewriting system. So you can basically use the simple you know, kind of built-in rules to make changes to traffic as it flows by. And so some of those are you know, just top-level menu items and so forth. So with the user agent's menu, I can say, hey, no matter what the browser actually sent for the user agent, you know, pretend to be Opera 963, or I think I had links in here at some point. Uh, you can actually set your own custom one. So if you want to change it to whatever you want, you can, you can change the user agent string. And Fiddler will just do that automatically on all of the requests. The filters tab offers a similar feature. So if you want to add a particular request uh, header or remove a particular response header, uh, one of the things you'll see down here is, is I've got this rule that, that, that uh, can remove the very header. Internet Explorer has some issues with the very header, and so if we're going to try and figure out, hey, is that the problem with the very header, we can just take it out on the live site without changing the site itself in any way. And this, of course, is very useful because usually it's not our website that we're trying to debug. Um, and you know, there's, there's other things on the rules menu here. So there's uh, basically the ability to remove caching headers. And you know, I can change my accept language to JavaScript and so forth. And we're going to talk a minute about how all of those things are implemented. But basically, they're all implemented in scripts. So you can write your own. And, and one of the things we've seen a lot is teams share them within the team. And so many of the teams that work on Microsoft's web properties actually you know, share out their rules files with the other people on their team so that they can do common things. The next thing I wanted to mention very briefly is the host extension. The host extension is on the tools menu, and you can just basically do what you do with a normal Windows host file. Uh, you can do fun things as well. Usually the demo I do is, you know, I, I go, I, I don't tell people I've done this, and I go remap, you know, google.com to bing.com, and then I open my browser to google.com and say, ah, oh, ha, 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 very funny. Uh, but we don't really have time for that today, so we'll, we'll, we'll skip that. 
Fiddler has this system of inspectors that allow you to, to modify requests and responses. And the interesting thing about this is most of the time people only use these in sort of a read-only mode. They say, oh, this is the header inspector, these are their headers, and so forth. But if I actually create a breakpoint and I say, hey, I'm going to break on the next request and I reissue this, when I actually view this in the inspector, it's now editable. And so if I want to change this header and say, hey, does it matter that if I, if I return, you know, except char set is star, like, is, that, is the server going to behave differently? I can do that. And now when I send it to the server, it's actually going to send this header that I've modified. And that's true of the request body and the response headers and the response body as well. And so this allows you to change the traffic as the browser sees it. And this can be very useful if you want to say, hey, you know, earlier we, we saw that property and we know that there's this other property that works better. Does that fix the website? Does it still work? Because we want to send them more workaround. And so you can make these traffic modifications with no participation of the server. And you can just kind of play around until you get things right. So the, the, the breakpointing system, I, I, sh I should have elaborated a little bit. There's, there's several ways to do the breakpoints. So the first thing is down in the status bar, you can just click on this guy. And right now, it's, it's pointing an up arrow with a red, a red pause button. And that means just basically break all requests. If I click it again, it'll break all responses. And I can clear it, and basically, that'll turn them off. But there's other ways to set breakpoints as well. So in the filters tab, basically, I can say, hey, break on any post request, or break on a particular content type on the response, or break on a get request with a query string. Um, but again, this is actually all baked into the Fiddler script system, which we're going to see in a minute. And so you can break on any criteria that's basically computationally feasible. Uh, and so you can break on anything that you want. Now, one of the things that's really important and a lot of people don't understand about Fiddler is that by default, Fiddler does what's called traffic buffering. And the reason for this becomes obvious if you think about it for a minute. In order to change the response, you have to actually collect the response and then present it to the user. And so by default, Fiddler will actually buffer the HTTP responses until they're complete and then send them back to the client. For small requests and responses, you probably will never even notice. But for a big file, like if I'm downloading a 300 meg ISO or something like that, you'll actually see the Internet Explorer is just kind of saying, waiting for sight, and doesn't appear to be making any progress. Well, that's because Fiddler is buffering all of this traffic. Fiddler has a streaming mode option. It's directly in the toolbar. And when you turn on streaming mode, it breaks your ability to do breakpoint debugging, but it'll return content back to the browser as soon as it's read. And this can be interesting, particularly for people who are doing performance timing scenarios, because as you'll see, here's, a, here's sort of a degenerate case where this HTML contains a bunch of image tags, and those image tags take some time to return. And the case where we buffer that full HTML file, no sub-download request.